What is cool in Tennessee Titans fans? We have an off-season approach, mock draft, free agency strategy, everything, roster breakdown, you name it for the Tennessee Titans today. Let's go ahead and deep dive this team and talk about hopefully what they can do this off-season and start off with the offensive line. In this offensive line, it needs to be improved. And especially at the tackle position, you have a major void. Andre Diller did not work out. I fully expect them to move on from him and get a left tackle this offseason. That is a must priority. Jalen Duncan, maybe move him inside the guard, do something like that with his athleticism. Let Peter Skoronsky, left guard, he's locked in as a starter for the future, showed a lot of good things. Also had some moments where he struggled in pass protection, I thought, but I think he's going to be a cornerstone player. I still see him as a very high-level guard. You got Andrew Brewer, who's a run blocker, a, a bit of a liability in pass protection. But anyway, he's come quite a bit of long ways in his career. We'll see. I ultimately think you got to protect your quarterback and Will Levis a lot more so. We'll see what they decide to do. I would personally bring in somebody in free agency. And then we got right guard Daniel Brunskill still under contract. And Brunskill is a nice player here to have along still under contract for one more season. You got Calvin Throckmorton, who was a good swing tackle. Andrew Rupsic as well. So you got those guys. I would bring back Th Throckmorton if you can. Brunskill still locked in, especially with his versatility. is a nice player to have on your offensive line. Dylan Radins. Wasn't bad at the end of the season, I will say. When you moved him over to the right tackle position, he did a pretty dang good job. So I would recommend bringing in somebody. There's no doubt about it. You need to bring in a quality backup there at the right tackle position, a George fan or et cetera. Like there are guys we'll talk about when we get into the free agency approach, Josh Nyman, et cetera. But Dylan Radins is a guy that I want to give him a chance to start because he looked decent. He looked the part and he held his own at the end of the season. So I want to give him every opportunity, especially as young of a player as he is. No matter what though, left tackle, big priority. And then center position, big time priority as well. Wide receiver wise, they need help at the wide receiver room as well. And DeAndre Hopkins is still a really good receiver. Is he a true number one anymore? That's a very hard to say. Traylon Burks has had his fair share of injuries and struggles. We'll see if he comes along. But at this point, I'm not banking on that. So I want to improve this receiving room no matter what they are. Nick westbrook Akine, nice special teamer and a contributor for this team. But at the end of the day, I do think, you know, being him being a free agent, we'll see if they decide to bring him back. Kyle Phillips, if he can stay healthy, I think Kyle Phillips is actually a very good slot receiver, or at least could be a very good slot receiver. We're going to need to bring some help in there no matter what, though. Chick Conquo, tight end. He's a good starter, so you got him locked in. You got Josh Wiley as the number two. Maybe you bring in a number three in free agency and or the draft. Running back-wise, King Henry is a free agent. It might be sad to see King Henry to go, but at the end of the day, I think that they may want to move on. Taji Spears has shown enough to me where he can handle a, a lot next season as their starter. You're going to need to bring somebody in, right? You're going to need to bring that like between the tackles guy. But Taji Spears, man, he's made some really nice plays this season in the receiving game and in the running game. Between his juking ability and breaking eight people's ankles, like the dude is going to be a nice playmaker. Had a really nice rookie campaign, and I expect him to build upon that. On to the quarterback position, Will Levis. I expect him to be the franchise quarterback for this team, but obviously we need to do a good job. We'll see what, how Brian Callahan, how he does for them in the coaching staff-wise, but I would imagine him being worked under so many good quarterbacks. Let's hope that he can help out Will Levis to the most of his ability. Malik Willis is a backup. And then we go on to the defense side of the ball and on the defensive line. Arden Key, Harold Landry, both solid edge rushers. At least Harold Landry did step up. And I know he was coming off the injury last year. And he definitely got better as the season went along. He actually woke up in, in a major way. So him and Arden Key, not a bad duo to have. Arden Key is a free agent in 2025. So we need to think about this in the future, not to mention they need some depth, right? So we need to find a number number two behind these guys. And then on the interior of the defensive line, you got Jeffrey Simmons, who's a beast, obviously. He's coming on a little bit of a down year for Jeffrey Simmons, right? When you think of Jeffrey Simmons, you think of him as a top 10, top five interior defense alignment. Had a bit of a, a, bit of a down year for Jeffrey Simmons but he's still a really good player and a big time impact and then and he was also dealing with injuries so you got Jalil Johnson interior is a free agent Nico Autry is a free agent you got some depth behind him with Kendrick Corbin or Quentin Bahana we'll see but I would I, I would bring in somebody here free agency and or the draft those are both areas we need to be looking at 
for those defensive line positions, filling some needs on the interior, a nose tackle and an interior, uh, you know, like a three, five tech type of dude. Their schemes could change. I will say we'll see what happens, but I would expect three, four still or just finding more help on the defensive line is a priority no matter what. On to the linebacker and core. Aziz Aljahir, really good linebacker, man. It was a good signing. I would re-sign him if you can. I would give him a three-year extension somewhere in that point. We'll get into the free agency part with him. Jack Gibbons also would try to give him a bit of an extension. I would imagine he'd be super cheap. But besides that, you got some depth. I don't know if I feel comfortable with any of these guys starting in case of injuries, but at the same time, we'll see this linebacking class. I don't know if I'm going to do anything too crazy with the draft picks that they have. On to the cornerback room, and this is another area that needs to be improved tremendously. And Christian Fulton is a free agent. I expect him to be gone. Sean Murphy Bunting, now that to me is 50-50 at this point. We'll see how much money he wants. I, I wouldn't be mad if they brought him back, but no matter what, they need free agency and the draft here. Roger McCreary, the only locked-in starter. I mean, he got some depth and whatnot. Hopefully, Caleb Farley can get healthy. Man, I'm rooting for him. We'll see what he can do, but no matter what, this is a draft and a free agency need. On to the safety room. Amani Hooker is still under contract. One more season. And then you got Elijah Molden as a backup there. You got Kavon Wallace, who showed a bit to be a nice starter for them at the end of the season. For Terrell Edmonds stepped in, and Wallace, to me, is a guy that you look to try to re-sign if you can. Him and Hooker, not a bad combination. It's not at least secondary or anything like that, but you can get the job done if you re-sign Wallace. You have Hooker, Molden, that's a decent group of three, and Mike Brown as well. Shane Carter's under contract. On to the free agency strategy. And the cut option for me, Andre Dillard, I'm letting him go. I understand you're not going to save a ton of money, especially if you, you cut him before June 1st. I don't care. I'm just cutting him June 1st. I'm moving on. You could save a little bit more money post June 1st because you can spread out the dead cap. I'm just going to go ahead and cut him, bring that savings on this year so we can utilize that money right away. So that takes our money from $73.9 million to $76.7 million that we have to play in free agency. But first, we have to re-sign some players. I'm going to let go Ryan Tannehill, Darren Henry. I know it's tough, man. An error has ended with, with King Henry, but... And uh, we wish him all the best, man. King Henry is a piece wherever he lands. You got Nick Westbrook Akine. I would let him walk too. You got Calvin Throckmorton. I would like to bring him back as some depth because I think he can give you a nice swing guard for them. You got Danico Autry. I decided to let go. $7.5 million. I just thought I didn't want to do that. Even though he is a good player still. Getting a little bit older. Maybe you look to bring in a little bit younger. And then Travis Gibson. I decided to let walk too. He wouldn't be a bad one to bring back on the cheap as a situational pass rusher. Aziz Aljahir, I, I prioritize bringing him back. He uh, got a $20.25 million deal total, three years, $6.75 million year over year. And then you got Jack Gibbons. I re-signed him as well. $2 million, one-year contract, approve it thing for him. And then you, he may actually, I think he's a restricted, so he should be back no matter what. So I try to overestimate these in terms of the cost or at least try to keep them within realistic. It's always tricky to you know say what's realistic, what's not. Christian Fulton, Sean Murphy Bunting, Terrell Edmonds, I let walk. And then you get Kavon Wallace back. I try to prioritize bringing him back $2 million. Maybe it's three, who knows. But somewhere in that ballpark, getting him would be nice for that secondary. Nick Folk, he had a really nice season, so I want to try to keep him around. And then some depth spend. And this is also kind of some miscellaneous, like long snappers and et cetera, right? Or miss if I miscalculated some of these values. So that brings our money down to $58.45 million after our re-signs. Now let's get on to our signing period. And here's some guys that I'm looking to sign. So Kyle Allen as a third quarterback, okay, as a, as a backup. Slash him and Malik Willis can compete it out maybe for that second roster spot. We shall see. Damian Harris will be that pounding back to go along with your Taji Spears starter there. And then Marquise Brown was our big spend on the offense side of the ball. He's going to be a nice deep threat for Will Levis and a much needed weapon. Then we get Drew Sample, backup tight end here. George Fant, swing tackle for them, left and right capabilities, but I see him competing right away at that right tackle position with Dylan Radins. Andre James would be a day one starter. I think he'd be an upgrade as a pass protector. Well, you have to, a little bit of a give and take in terms of uh, run blocking. I think that Andre James gives you a little bit more of a, of a sound pass protector at that center position. He was $27 million, three years. Uh, for that deal, $9 million per season. And then we got some Cincinnati Bengals guys. I know, I know, but it is what it is. DJ Reader on that interior defensive line. Him and Jeffrey Simmons, too good of an option for me to pass up. Yeah, he's a little bit of an older prospect, but it's only going to be like a two-year type of guaranteed deal. Okay, that's the way I see this. 
And for two years, if I can get DJ Reader, I'm happy with that. He'd only be 31, and if you have to move on from him at 32, that's fine. He's not, you know, he's still a really high-level impact player. Armin Watts has some depth on the defensive line. Same thing with Maurice Hurst, who can be a nice situational pass rusher for them. Daryl Taylor, a situational pass rusher, $4 million. That might be high, I don't know, but that's the estimate that I got out there. And as I was saying, they need some more depth at, off the edge. And he's, again, I, he's got all the potential to be a really high-level pass rusher. He's just... He's got to put it together, man. On to Chidi Wuzie, another Cincinnati Bengal player here. Two years, $21 million, 10.5 per year. He comes in, helps the secondary out right away. It might be cheaper to just bring back Sean Murphy Bunting, you're saying, but anyway, I like Cheeto. You bring him here, and you get yourself some help in the secondary to go along with Roger McCreary. And then we got our draft spend of $7 million that I budgeted in. And this is before restructures. This does not include any backloaded contracts. So this is literally, which no team seem to do anymore. I mean, maybe a few, but most teams backload their contracts. So if you factor that in, any sort of restructure, if they do that, or do, even if they don't, I mean, if they just backload a couple of these contracts, they're going to be under the cap. So this is a very conservative Negative 12.25 million, not worried about it at all. These are some guys I'm looking to go after, at least some positions. So let's look at the roster now before the draft, after free agency, and what we we're able to do. Adding in Marquise Brown into this receiving core makes it so we don't have to go receiver in the first or second round, okay? Because now you got DeAndre Hopkins and Marquise Brown. Like, I'm happy about that. That's enough. Kyle Phillips, who I am high on, I think that he can be a high level slide. Just got to stay healthy. That's the big thing. But I would look to add there, okay? And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to add. Plus, you got Traylon Burks, so maybe, right? The, you know, there's, we'll see what happens there. But he's also a fourth receiver in this case scenario. Offensive line, we had an Andre Dr James at the center position. You had in George Fan as a swing tackle for them. You had Nicholas petit Freer coming back from injury. So in combination, you know, it leads us to a huge void at the left tackle position. But with where they're picking... I feel very confident that they're going to land either a Joe Alt or an Ola Fushano. I think it's very unlikely that both are off the board. It's possible, but I think it's unlikely. So I feel confident that we can get that left tackle of the future protect Will Levis. We get Drew Sample as a backup, Kyle Allen, Damian Harris as a nice one-two punch with Taji Spears. And then on to the defense side of the ball. We add in DJ Reader next to Jeffrey Simmons. Oh, Jeffrey Simmons is going to ball out. I'm telling you right now, if Jeffrey Simmons and DJ Reader on that defensive line, this is going to be ferocious. And then if they can stay healthy, of course, Maurice Hurst and Aaron Watts as some depth. And, and Hurst can be a, you know listed as a starter, but they'll be utilizing rotation and stuff like that, depending on the package and downs. Daryl Taylor as some depth. Maybe you need to add somebody else too in the draft as some youth. And then cornerback-wise, you had Enchido Awuzie, Roger McCreary. You still have a void in that cornerback position, at least at the moment. I'm not ready to predict Caleb Farley as a starter for them. Obviously, I want to give him a shot to be the starter. But at the same time, we need to go at this in the draft. And then linebacker, we didn't do anything. I feel like they got some depth. And, and you know, one of these guys can step up. So I, I think between Gibbons and, and Al Shahir coming back, we feel confident they can get the job done there. Uh, Safety-wise, maybe bringing somebody in, in the late rounds is what I put there as a, as a backup since Wallace was only a one-year deal. And same thing with Hooker's only uh, one more year on his contract. So let's get into the draft now. It is draft time. And with my first selection, it's Joe Alt. Is there any other way to go other than the Ola Fashano or Joe Alt? I don't think so. I mean, there is receiver. You could look at that. And, and as I talk about, if, if Alt and Fashano were off the board, then sure, go ahead and take a receiver. Like, that's fine. You can you can definitely do that or take Brock Bowers, BPA. You could trade down to it. Hey, look, if both tackles are off the board, that means one of the quarterbacks is falling and you can trade down. But Joe Alt comes in right away, left tackle of the future. Boom. It's a locked-in starter, in my opinion. On to our second round pick, Quinion Mitchell, the Toledo Rocket. Going to hopefully be a rocket for this team. It's the Rockets, but anyway, uh, where's Tracy McGrady? Maybe you can be the Tracy McGrady, but Quinion Mitchell had it into the secondary with his ball skills. Be a nice addition to this group. And then we go on to Justin Abogbe from Alabama. Really was impressed watching him. And I think he's got some serious upside, man. He's got good athleticism, really sound despite his size as a run defender. Maybe his pass rush tools aren't quite there, but man, he's he was a good player. He was one of those guys that continued to, you know, when I watch Alabama games, he was just flashing. So he's going to come on that interior defense line, be a backup for them, but, you know, rotational role, hopefully be the long-term starter on one of those interior defense line positions. Anaya Smith, receiver, Texas A&M. I like his yak ability. He's got good, you know, dense build to his frame and somebody that I think is a little bit of a sleeper, actually, in this class, but gives you a little bit of competition with Kyle Phillips in depth, much-needed depth if you have injuries. Kyle Phillips hasn't yet to shown 
he can stay healthy yet, so hopefully he can because, I, like I said, I like him. But Anais Smith, also a guy that can give you some help in the slot and is a return specialist for Nick westbrook Kikine being gone. Then we go on to Brendan McGregor, edge rusher, defense alignment from Michigan, the Wolverine. He's a guy that was also kind of, you know, an impact player for them and down the run. I mean, I haven't watched tons of tape, but when I was watching the games, especially in the college football playoff, McGregor was making some nice plays. So he comes on to this defensive line, gives him a little bit more edge depth, at least competes there with Rashad Weaver for maybe that fifth and final edge position or however many people they keep, if they keep six, who knows. And then we go on to Evan Williams, developmental safety here, got good size, can be somebody that you sit for a year as that fourth safety and develops. Maybe he can take over one of those jobs and then finally will putnam uh from clemson center gives you some depth at that center position for andre james maybe once again it's only a one to two year guarantee contract nothing else it's just depth right that's really what they need on the interior guard swing depth here i see him as center but anyway a little bit of depth on the interior of the offensive line so let's look at the draft now after free agency and after the draft we add in Joe Alt at the left tackle position. And you also obviously have Andre James from free agency, George Fan, Will Putnam in the draft late. But Joe Alt, Peter Skaronsky, Andre James, Daniel Brunskill, Dylan Radin slash George Fan. I'm feeling better about this. This hopefully will not be a bottom three top or bottom five offensive line. This should get you back to a mid-tier hopeful offensive line. Maybe better, right? But don't, let's not get too, too greedy with it, right? Let's just, you know, I'm hoping they can get back to mid-tier, protect your quarterback, and I feel good this offensive line can do that. Receiver-wise, you add in Marquise Brown, you add in Onias Smith. Is it enough? You still have DeAndre Hopkins, at least for one more season. You got Chica Conquo, so you bring in Onias Smith, Drew Sample. Hopefully Kyle Phillips can stay healthy for you. That, that, to me, is at least in the right direction, okay? And then maybe next year, this is something where you look at it in the first round. You have Traylon Burks, too. Maybe he can elevate stay healthy as well and he can give you something so I'm, I'm hopeful that we can see some developments from some of these guys in combination with a hit in free agency with marquise brown and, and then our draft and anaya smith and then we add in from free agency kyle allen and damian harris as we were saying earlier onto the defense side of the ball we add in justin abogby as i talked about earlier giving you some much needed depth and also future looking at this position because Marquise Hurst and also Armin Watts only brought in on one-year deals. Corbin's only on a one-year deal, I believe, and Bohana, same thing. So getting a little bit of much-needed depth, I think he has got the upside after a year to be a starter for them. And then edge-wise, Brandon McGregor to compete in there with Rashad Weaver, at least for some depth. You got Daryl Taylor. Maybe not ideal. Maybe I would have liked to go after one early, an edge player earlier, but that's kind of the way the board felt. I felt like there were some other big positions that we had to address, such as the cornerback position, adding in Quinio Mitchell, Cheeto Awuzie, you got Roger McCreary, Caleb Farley. Like, that's a group of four. My hope is that those guys can kind of lock this position down now. We don't do anything in the linebacker position. At the end of the day, you know, they've got some guys Jack Gibbons and Alsha here, that was kind of my priority in the free agency period. And safety-wise, we had an Evan Williams just serve for some future possible hit there. You know, throw a late-round pick on safeties. A lot of times, you know, those guys can really, you can find some gems in the 6th, 7th round of the safety position. So, that is our draft slash off-season free agency overall approach for the Tennessee Titans. Let me know, Titans fans, what you think. Hope you have a really good day. Tighten up. Talk to you later.